I think it's safe to say that Kaer Morhen is a part of The Witcher 3 that leaves you wanting more. It's a place you don't want to be done with, but the main quest moves along quickly and the side content in the area is minimal. That brings us to this video, because I have some major Kaer Morhen content and details that you've definitely never seen before, whether you've played the game once or 15 times. There's even a few new objectives and a mini-quest I have to show you. So to start, I want to begin with a new Vesemir conversation. Just after you bring Uma to Kaer Morhen, there's supposed to be a long talk with Vesemir about why exactly he's been putting so much energy into fixing up the place. For some reason though, this conversation doesn't work. It's either bugged or was potentially removed, so the only way you can see it is by manually enabling the dialogue option with mods on PC. No offense, but why all the construction? So the roof tiles don't drop on our heads? Roof tiles usually fall from the roof. You're putting up walls, rebuilding the fortress for three people. Why? Because I remember how it was, Wolf, before the massacre. We were twenty, and that's just teachers. As for candidates, I can't turn back the clock, I know. But I refuse to just sit and stare at these ruins. Since I'm on the topic of Vesemir and Kaer Morhen repairs, which is very specific, there's a few cool details on that same subject that can be found during the prologue. The first happens just before you speak to Vesemir while he's taking a nap. You're supposed to be able to inspect a few items on the floor around him, but for some reason in the game as released, the inspection prompt doesn't work for any of them. One of the items laying on the floor is a drawing Siri made. A drowner with a mustache and glasses. Siri at work. If you've never seen it, here's her handiwork up close. You can also inspect three separate textbooks Siri was studying. Illustrated Atlas of Insectoids. From Arrakis to Zeracanian Xanthogramma. Brother Adelbert's Bestiary. A classic. Ghouls and Al Ghouls, or the Vile Denizens of the Necropolis, by John of Bruges. Intriguing title. Boring as shit. That last one is later referenced multiple times. After taking notes on ghouls and owl ghouls, wanted to rest my eyes a bit. Well, yes, but that book was horribly dull. I know. At the very least, you ought to be able to tell a ghoul from an owl ghoul. By markings like unto the panthera tigris that in Zeracania dwells, and by the sickly paleness of its visage. You can also inspect the note Siri was working on, which I did go ahead and translate by the way. It's just her name over and over again. Siri, then Cirilla, Cirilla Fiona, and so on. Siri's notes. Pretty chaotic. Another interesting little detail in the prologue can be found if you ignore Siri when you're supposed to be racing her in the tutorial, and instead explore outside the front of the castle. That's the only way you can actually reach this area until much, much later. But even so, the devs were paying attention to the little things, because what I want to point out here is what can be found way over in this corner of the courtyard. You'll notice a completely uninteresting wall that is sure to be structurally sound for hundreds of years to come. You may remember that this is the exact same area you and Lambert walk through when you're looking for his boat. Savola's Breach. Still haven't patched it up? Vesemir'd like to. Doesn't bother me, though. Not expecting anyone to lay siege, and... This way I got a shortcut to the pond. Shame those salamandra assassins didn't punch a few more holes in our walls. Or finish the job and reduce these ruins to rubble. They talk about Savola's Breach, that massive hole in the wall that was put there during the events of the first Witcher. However, because this prologue is a dream of Geralt set before the first game, that breach isn't there yet and the wall isn't destroyed. I want to point out that there's no way you would even see this to begin with unless you specifically agree to Ray Siri and then just don't do it because that's the only opportunity to even get over there. Regardless of that, the devs were still paying attention to the very small details. By the way, that hole in the wall is the same one the Wild Hunt enter through depending on your choices during the Battle of Kaer Morhen. Geralt! They're coming in through Savola's breach! So speaking of the battle, every other detail today takes place directly before or during it. First, I have a couple of conversations with both Yennefer and Triss. These are not cut content, you're just kind of forced into missing them once you return to Kaer Morhen with Ciri. Yen and Triss will have a little walking conversation you can't miss, but before they've even finished, you'll start running into those you've recruited. Hjalmar and his men are first, but Yennefer and Triss don't stop talking until you reach Vesemir, who is always there. Anyway, you're also supposed to be able to talk to Yennefer and Triss separately once they make it up to the keep but both of them despawn the second they go through the door, so you never get the opportunity to. And after that, you're forced into a cutscene and the option is gone for good. However, you can still catch the conversations in the game as is if you just run past absolutely everybody, skip all of the forced cutscenes, and talk to them while they're still walking just before they disappear. Damn, I was less nervous before that fight with the dragon. 
Only you and I truly know what all of us will soon face. Damn, I was less nervous before that fight with the dragon. You defeated them once. I know you can do it again. I know that look. Something eating you? The hunt could arrive any minute. I know that look. Something eating you? We'll never surrender, Siri. During this same scene, there's also a bit of cut content related to Hjalmar and Vesemir. Hjalmar is supposed to have a unique interaction if you saved both of his friends during his side quest. Here's what that sounds like. Thanks for coming. We spent our lives preparing to face the Shadows Morhog. We slew the giant, we'll slay the wraiths as well. Ha! <laughs> Aye. Vesemir, on the other hand, has another entire conversation with Geralt that doesn't work. It's supposed to play out in the situation where you didn't bother asking Ermion for help, because if you did, there's a different scene where Ermion and Vesemir have become best friends. The solo scene without Vesemir doesn't activate for some reason though, but on PC it can be restored. Here's that one. Found some old swords, all forged of meteorite steel. They lie well in your hand, and they ought to pierce the armor of the Hunt's riders. During the battle itself, there's also a quick one-liner from Vesemir that was bugged. Be alert! Watch out for each other! They found a way inside! There's also two really interesting cut objectives slash mini quests during the Letho and Lambert section of the battle, when you need to close the portals with Dimeridium. This first one is pretty amazing, and it involves luring an Ericus, so a huge spider, and setting it loose on the wild hunt. It's something Lambert will suggest once you reach the second portal. I saw some Arrakis tracks around here a while back. If the beast hasn't moved on, we could find it, sick it on the hunt's warriors. The Ericus layer can then be found nearby. An Ericus. We need to lure it. Keep a lookout. I'll lay some fresh meat down as bait. All you have to do then is let Lambert lay down the bait, and the Ericus will help you take out the riders. <laughs> Natural selection in action. I will say, I'm pretty sure this one was intentionally cut or maybe just to give up on. I say that because I had to try it like seven times before it worked correctly. Whatever is in the files is clearly sort of unfinished. The spider just kept disappearing or not moving. The other cut objective is pretty similar. It takes place over by the final portal or the one way back in the trees by the structure where Witcher students used to train. At one point, you were supposed to be able to use the ruin and the weaponry that's still there to your advantage. The old gauntlet, remember? Let's see if the ballistae still work. Draw them in, then puncture some holes in them. So that's it for today. If you enjoyed the video, consider leaving a like as it really helps to get these videos out there. And if you like Witcher content, be sure to subscribe. We're only 2,000 subscribers away from 50k, which I am ready for. Also, let me know in the comments what was new to you from this video. Hopefully most of it was, because I always try to put together interesting things I've never seen covered elsewhere. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one.